I was born and grew up uh, in a East rural Poland. village, 35 kilometers or so east of Polokwane. You know, growing up all in the rural areas, all that we knew, me, my friends, and other people around is that bees were not good. You know, if you come across bees, it's either you, you make a run for it, or you just make sure that you kill it before it stings you. And today, yeah, here yeah, I am actually, you know, being involved in such important and critical research that has to do with these honeybees. Up in the mountains, lots of uh, lovely proteas around, and then lots of smaller little nondescript bushes that we often miss when we're walking past, little pink flowers and purple mm -hmm. flowers, and they all contribute to a diversity in the bee's diet. And it's unique vegetation to the Cape, so the two have evolved together. Fainbos is essential to the survival of our Cape bee, especially with other forage being knocked down the way they're taking it out. Most beekeepers who've got access to fainbos, or who know what they're doing, will try to use fainbos. This is a new queen in this hive. You can see they're Cape black bees, so they're very black. They're Cape bees. Lots of different colors of pollen. Very nice. Does South Africa need more research into such forage resources? And the answer is it's absolutely yes. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah, wonderful. This is the honey stomach that I've just pulled out from the abdomen of the bee. Three. i would give it a three, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Three there. There are several factors that can be considered threats to our honeybees and mostly being the likes of uh, pesticide use, diseases, and we also have the stress that these bees encounter when the beekeepers work them for pollinating the crops and also the, the other one being the loss of forage. And in this instance, forage is something that we can do something about. We're in spring now, just got through a cold, wet winter and we're uh, back with the bees after they've had their break from the beekeeper in the Feinbos. The farmer's trees are starting to flower being spring and they need something to come and pollinate their trees of which honeybees are one of the easiest to control. Okay, I'm going to prep this hive for pollination because I think they're plenty strong enough. They've got five frames of brood. There's the queen. The queen is the egg factory. She makes sure that these colonies survive by laying eggs which turn into adult bees. Before they're any good for pollination, they have to be a certain strength. So this little queen needs to lay lots of eggs. The bee's role is very important in modern day world as far as food security goes unfortunately we have to manipulate them to be able to take unnaturally large numbers of beehives into orchards losses happen as in all businesses but we're obviously trying to look after the bees and be shepherds of the bees not not just abuse them and use them with forage as far as forage goes we need diversity we don't want to always be reliant on monoculture like this canola here. So we need to have um, canola, we need to have fainbos, we need to have the wild spring flowers, we need to have eucalyptus, we need uh, a bit of everything, I think. This farm takes about 1,200 hives. It's one of our bigger farms. Oh man, those bees are working nicely. So please. Those are beautiful, strong hives. Those are not just any hives. Those are pollination bees, they're special bees. The farmers have planted the trees so intensively that they need a huge number of pollinators at one time. And the easiest, most reliable way to control that is to bring in beehives. Bee health is the huge consideration, especially with a lot of countries having problems with their bees. Getting the right diet, getting them stronger, build up, and making sure that they are eating well, it's, it's quite a constraint. Eh? Not just getting monoculture or getting supplementary feeding. That's a short-term fix. It's not a long-term fix for bees. That is all brood over here, which means that they had to feed that brood with pollen. And we've got pollen around the edges. Have a look at the diversity of the colors here in the pollen. So that is what contributes to their healthiness, is to have diversity in their protein. That's their protein, right? There we go. Check that out. There's lovely honey. 
There we go. Here's a nice little plum coming here. Look at that. There we go. Those are all plums. It's amazing to see the results of the bees. Yeah. So you just see the bees working the flowers all the time, and that's the, actually the more important is that they get that. World population is growing very fast, and it needs to be fed. The farmers are going to be planting more and more trees and vegetables and things to supply the demand. So we're going to have to supply bees. We're going to probably have to have more and more beehives. And we can't do it at present because we don't have enough forage. We don't have enough place to keep the bees alive for the rest of the year to bring them in for, for pollination. In most instances, we, we don't get to think and realize how the food we eat gets to us. This is a more complex system than we think, you know. Every little thing depends on the other. And it is very important that we, as the beneficiaries at the end of the line, start thinking about such things. We can sit back and relax and think that things will continue to be the way they are. The first step is ensuring that these honeybees have good nutrition, and that's one critical point to, to focus on. Our daily activities, they cross paths with the paths of these insects' lives, and I think it's very important that the public is aware of the importance of such pollinators, what they benefit from them, and what they can do in helping them. There's always something that you can do, not just looking after honeybees, but our natural environment and landscape and ecosystems as a whole.